When you walk into our sanctuary, there's something I think that our children notice that we don't. And I think that our children notice it because they haven't been beaten down quite as much as we adults have by life, by circumstances, whatever it may be. Truly, Christ was correct when he said that unless you become like a little child, you shall by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I think it's because they see things that we don't. They see faith in the faithless. They see pain in those who, who believe that they hide it well. They see hurt. They see love in people who can't love themselves. Children just see things. Oliver is not quite three, and I dread to see life beat it out of him. That sparkle, that faith, that we seem to so easily let go of, that we so easily look past. But when you come into the sanctuary, the sanctuary should be a place where it hits you right in the face, where life no longer beats you down, but in every aspect of the sanctuary. And we should really take time to notice and to build a sanctuary that reminds us of this and to teach that our sanctuary cries out to us the faith. I think pastors would do well to not so quickly take down uh, a baptismal font to put up a drum set or whatever it may be. If we actually believe that these things are effective, effective. In other words, when you look at these things, they should scream at you the heavenly realities. You, there's a reason why the baptismal font is right there. For every funeral, almost all except for one funeral home, comes to me and says, can we move the baptismal font? It's, it's in the way. And I go, no, that's the point. It's supposed to be in your way. It's supposed to be. Well, we really need to get, we really need to move it. Well, if, if you move that, you're moving the very symbol of what saved their soul. There's a reason why the Paschal candle is, writ, is lit today. After the Ascension, after Ascension Day, the Paschal candle is not supposed to be lit except for baptisms and all saints. Why? And feast days as well. Why? Because it reminds us of our baptism. And so, yeah, it's supposed to be in your way. The altar is supposed to be in the center of the chancel. The chancel is supposed to be separate from the rest of the sanctuary or the nave. It's supposed to be. Everything that you see is supposed to teach you. And if it's not, then you don't have the eyes of a child. And I'm not blaming you because we all do it. It all becomes commonplace. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, when we see these things, we just kind of look beyond them. But make no mistake, when you enter into Augustana and this sanctuary, and you see all the things that remind you of Jesus and your salvation, you are no longer in the United States of America. You enter into this sanctuary, and you are in the house of God. And when you enter into the house of God, God must remind you of whose you are. Which is why no sanctuary should be without Christ on the cross. Because we need to see the wages of our sin and the satisfaction that's made for them. So, I'll give you an example of the faithful eyes of little ones and how we sort of look beyond things. I can count 
just off the top of my head, three women of Augustana who come into our church who have lost their husbands and who come especially this day to be comforted. We have mothers who have lost their children who come to this sanctuary to be comforted. We have fathers also who have lost children who come on All Saints Day to be comforted, to be reminded of the gospel. We have people who have buried their parents also come to be comforted. I have my mother who battled cancer who has come here today to be comforted. But you didn't see any of them. Because we look past each other. We look past each other too much, I think. And that's why People need to know when they come into the sanctuary that Christ is here and that our sanctuary hits them in the face and reminds them that they are not alone because it is a wonderful thing that when we step through these doors we're no longer in the United States of America and we're in God's house and this is why because the world out there hates you and reviles you the world hates Christ and hates Christianity. If you're looking for an easy road, you picked the wrong religion. Well, Christ says, everything that we believe to be true, Christ gives us the opposite. Those who mourn, Christ calls them blessed. It doesn't seem right. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, Christ calls them blessed. The merciful, those who apply mercy to others, especially the ones who don't deserve it in our eyes, Christ calls them blessed. The pure in heart, blessed. Peacemakers, blessed. The persecuted, blessed. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, Christ says. Blessed are the weak. Blessed are the dead who die in Christ. Our church has to remind us of that. Your pastor has to remind you of that. You have to remind one another of that. All Saints Day is not an easy day, but it is a joyful one. It is, a, it is one to celebrate. It is one because the reality that we get to come to today is that we repent of our sins and we are forgiven by Christ as well as joining our voices with the entire company of heaven. The reason why our sanctuary should hit you in the face as, as godly and loving and heavenly is because it is a reminder of heaven itself. Why do you think we have the Lord's Supper every single Sunday? It's so that you can have a foretaste of the heavenly peace that your loved ones who have gone before you receive every single day. That's why they call it a foretaste of the feast to come. For them, it's not a foretaste of the feast to come. It's a present feast. And when you come and you kneel, you kneel with your loved ones. All the company of heaven. And I don't mean figuratively. I'm not using illustrative language. Literally, you receive Christ with the angels, the archangels, and all the company of heaven.
and in that, even when we can't comfort ourselves, Christ comforts you. There's nothing better than that. Yes, we should be comforting one another. As I said, many have come here to be comforted. And Christ will do it. But you go and do likewise. Don't let one more Sunday go by without hugging someone that you know is suffering and telling them that you are with them. Don't let one more Sunday go by where you just walk past someone who may be hurting. The reality is, we don't know what people go through. But I promise you, people are hurting. And if you cannot reach out to them in mercy, you don't get to call yourself a Christian. Because that's what Christ does. He reaches out. And He has mercy on those who do not deserve mercy. He loves those who do not deserve to be loved. Have you ever felt that way? So horrible and sinful that you don't understand why anyone can love you? If you're married, the answer is yes. At one time or another, that's happened. And I hate to tell you, but you're right. But deserve has got nothing to do with it. Christ crucified is not fair. It's not the fair thing. And thanks be to God that Christ crucified isn't the fair thing. Because of the unfairness of the cross, you get to receive the benefits of not being fair. But you don't have the authority to not be fair to one another. To love one another as Christ loved the church and gave His life up for her. Go and do likewise. Know that your loved ones who are in heaven with Christ rejoice. They are not looking down on you. They are looking up to Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And they deign to come down with us as we commune on the body and blood of our God. This is not only a privilege. It's the very thing. Christ, flesh and blood, is the very thing that connects us with them and all of us to Christ. There can be nothing better. So let's do that. Let's come and commune. Remember your loved one. Make the sign of the cross. Remember your own baptism. Take, eat. This is the body of our Lord. Take, drink. This is the blood of our Lord. I say thanks be to God for the foretaste of the feast to come and the feast that your loved ones are partaking in at the exact same time. I love you all. And I know that many of you are hurting. I'm here. Christ is here. Don't be afraid to come and hear the gospel of Christ. Amen.